So I've been using the GoPro Hero cameras literally since the Hero 1 came out in like 2004. I'm really familiar with the interface and I've always gotten pretty good results with GoPro cameras, especially with the recent iterations. But at the end of the day, these cameras are just tools that help us create engaging and immersive videos. And if a more efficient tool comes along and improves my experience, I'm gonna give it a go. In this video, a close look at Insta360's newest action camera, the Ace Pro, and five practical everyday reasons that I've been recently favoring it over the tried and true Hero 12. Now, just to be totally transparent, Insta360 actually sent over both the new Ace Pro and a brand new Hero 12 for me to test out. They basically just said, try both cameras and make a video sharing your experiences. Now to me, this just emphasizes Insta360's confidence in this new camera, and it really highlights that this is not some incremental update. The new Ace Pro is kind of a big step forward in my opinion. But I do want to reiterate that Insta360 didn't tell me what to say at all, and they didn't see this video before it went live. Okay, so the first thing that all the tech channels are gonna be talking about is the image sensor size. Now the current iteration of the GoPro Hero 12 employs a one over 1 1.9 inch sensor, which correlates to about 35 square millimeters of surface area. While the new Ace Pro incorporates a larger one over 1 1.3 inch sensor, which doesn't actually sound like a big deal, but if you run the numbers, the calculated image sensor size is about 72 square millimeters, which is more than twice the surface area of the Hero 12. Now the one over 1.3 sensor is also what the new DJI Action 4 uses, and it seems to be a reason that a lot of people are skipping out on this iteration of the Hero 12. Now shoot, sensor size is just one of many elements involved in capturing an image, but fundamentally, a larger sensor can capture more information, which among other things, helps to improve low light performance and helps to increase the dynamic range of your videos. Now, again, we're not a tech channel here, but in my experience, there is a noticeable difference in the dynamic range between the Hero 12 and the new Ace Pro. But I think more impressive is the low light performance of the Insta360 camera. Now, these are just some basic side-by-side -side clips of me leaving my office the other day, and when there's somewhat ample light, like here in the atrium, the GoPro does okay, but it's clear that the Ace Pro is much brighter and cleaner thanks to some onboard AI denoising that's going on behind the scenes. And then when the light really starts to dissipate, the GoPro kind of falls apart and just isn't able to capture enough light. Whereas the Ace Pro is at least usable, though not crystal clear. Now in this clip here, it's basically nighttime outside and the parking lot is only lit up by this one main light post. Now these clips were both shot at 4K, 24 frames per second, but it's clear that the Ace Pro just handles low light situations much better than the Hero 12. Now as far as the dynamic range, I actually think the two cameras are somewhat on par, especially when the lighting conditions are good. Now in this clip captured by the Hero 12, I'm kind of riding right along the edge of the shaded region, and you can see that the shadows are pretty well exposed and the highlights aren't blown out at all. Now there is a little bit of data loss where it's really dark, like the backside of the handlebars for instance, but otherwise it's pretty good overall. And then this is the same general location on the Ace Pro with HDR turned off. And it's also doing a pretty decent job preserving the shadows and the highlights, but the shadows are certainly brightened up a little bit with active HDR turned on. Although it kind of looks like it's almost a bit overexposed as you start to lose some detail in the sky. And again, these are just the default settings. I'm just toggling active HDR on and off. So you can definitely tweak the settings on either camera to your preference. Now it should also be noted that on the Ace Pro, HDR is on by default. So if you don't want to use this feature, you actually have to manually turn it off. Okay, so the larger sensor size on the new Ace Pro is certainly a big upgrade, but there are several other features that, as a non-camera techie guy, I think appeal to me just as much, if not more. For instance, the second feature that has me reaching for the Ace Pro is the large 2.4 inch flip out touchscreen that really improves the usability of this camera over the GoPro. Now I do like that the Hero 12 has a front facing screen, but in practice, it's barely big enough to frame up a shot at arm's length, let alone at the end of a long selfie stick. Whereas the flip out screen on the Ace Pro just makes the whole vlogging thing way easier. Now this is a feature that even the DJI Action 4 doesn't have. And to me, it just represents some true creativity and innovation by the folks over at Insta360. Now you might be wondering why the Ace Pro even has a front facing screen if the main touch screen just flips up and faces forward. Now I was kind of wondering the same thing, but when you do flip up the screen for vlogging mode, all of the capture settings are displayed on the smaller front screen, which leaves the big screen completely clean and distraction free to frame up your shot or to even act as a monitor. 
It's actually pretty useful and it definitely improves the user experience. Okay, so then the third feature that I really think, I mean, I'll go as far as to call this a game changer, is the integrated magnetic quick release mounting system. Now there are companies that manufacture this type of mounting system for the GoPro cameras. They're aftermarket, which means you have to add additional hardware to your GoPro, which certainly adds cost and bulk. Well, on the other hand, the Insta360H Pro and the DJI cameras for that matter, incorporate integrated magnetic mounting points on the camera body itself, which makes swapping the camera from mount to mount super easy. Now you might be thinking this is an unnecessary feature and you know, who's mounting and unmounting a camera that many times anyways. Well, if you're trying to bike vlog, which us bike YouTube people often find ourselves doing, it's actually really convenient to pull the camera off of a chest mount do a quick talking head clip and then just snap it back to place and off you go. Also, if any of you have ever tried recording first person on bike footage from a chest mount, you know that it takes some amount of experimenting to find the right angle so that you're not pointed at the ground or at the sky. Well, with the standard GoPro fingers, you've got to undo the thumb screw do your talking head clip, and then re-screw the camera back on, all of which certainly takes time, and you have to make sure to get it back to the same angle as before, which introduces an extra opportunity to mess up subsequent POV shots. Now the quick release mounting system is just another one of these major steps forward in the action camera space, and I have no doubt that GoPro will eventually follow suit with their own version of a quick release mount, they just haven't done it yet. All right then, so that brings me to the fourth feature that I've really been enjoying with the Ace Pro. And this one's not really a feature so much as just the user interface and the user experience. Now Insta360 seems to listen to customer feedback and really act on it by incorporating just quality of life upgrades that help creators save time and energy. For instance, one of the new features is that you can pause recordings and then resume them whenever you'd like, so you can keep your files a lot more organized in the camera. There's also an AI highlights feature that finds and keeps only the best moments from a long clip, which can also save you from having to scrub through a ton of dead footage later on when you get home. Now, if you're not quite ready to trust the AI to do this for you, you can still review what the AI thought were the key segments, and you can modify them as you see fit, either saving them as separate files or combining all the highlights into a single video clip. And the thing is, all of this is done in camera, in theory, while you're shooting. Whenever you get a second or two all throughout the day, which can actually add up to a lot of time saved in post-production. Now the mobile app is also really intuitive and quick to pair to any of the cameras in the Insta360 lineup. Within the app, you can modify your footage and even apply AI warp features if you want. But even if you're not too crazy about that, there's practical things like background file downloads to your phone, which is a feature that the GoPro and DJI apps don't have. Now, typically I don't use the mobile features all that much to be honest, I usually just transfer files directly to my computer via SD card. But I do like the mobile experience when I use it, and I'll often find myself using the mobile app to reframe 360 shots to post a quick clip to social media. Okay, and that brings me to the fifth and final practical common sense reason that I've been reaching for the Insta360 cameras lately, and that's the absence of a subscription-based service. Now, I know you don't have to subscribe to GoPro's premium subscription plan, but if you do, you unlock things like AI highlight videos, and editing tools in the Quick app, which you already get for free with the Insta360 app. Now with the GoPro subscription, you do also get things like discounts on future GoPro camera purchases and unlimited cloud storage, which I'm sure are nice. But to me, the mere fact that GoPro has started charging for a premium subscription just makes the whole thing feel a little bit I don't know, exclusive. And truthfully, who really wants another monthly subscription fee when you've already got too many as it is? All right, so I know that I've missed some talking points about the new Insta360 Ace Pro, but again, these are just a few of the practical differences between the Hero 12 and the new Ace Pro that, for me, have made a real difference in the user experience. Things that actually matter to basic, everyday users like myself. And again, this is a non-tech channel's take on a new action camera that, I think is giving GoPro a real run for their money. Now between the Insta360 X3, the tiny Go3, and this new Ace Pro, it's pretty clear that Insta360 innovates quickly and critically they listen to and take action based on consumer feedback, which is something that I've come to appreciate over the past few years. And I'm always genuinely excited to see what new products are working on. All right, well that's gonna do it for this one. If you have any specific questions about the Ace Pro or my experience with it so far, just let me know down below. Thanks again for watching and thanks for subscribing to the channel. If you haven't already, see you next time.